Welcome to the Connected Leaders Academy Virtual Conference, designed to reshape your vision of transformation. As we navigate the evolving business landscape, our speakers will unveil innovative strategies to manage and initiate change. Prepare to adapt, innovate, and lead, ensuring your role in this transformative era. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. My name is Brian Curran. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about how to win in your business with dynamic copywriting and sales. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this stuff because this is actually, um, you know, these are two of some of the biggest pillars that I offer in my business. So a little bit about me, just so you guys can understand kind of where I come from and a little bit about my background and what I'm doing in my business. So initially, you know, my strongest skill set had always been sales. I have been in sales in some way, shape, or form. Uh, for gosh, it's probably it's been like over eighteen years now. I'm thirty six, so um, literally half my life, pretty much my entire adult life, I've been in some sort of sales and client facing client facing role. So that's the biggest part of my background is that sales background. I've kind of I feel like I've kind of done it all in essence. So I used to you know when I first started. Um, I was the guy, you know, doing the cold calling, you know, and booking the appointments to the guy that was doing the proposal presentations, the negotiating, following up with clients, um, you know, managing the pipeline, trying to get the deal over the, you know, over the finish line and closing the deal, so to speak, so that our company could generate the type of revenue that it needed and have the type of book of business that it wanted. And then I became the person that manage those people. So I managed, you know, the entry level folks, the the proposal, the actual account executives, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I served in a very pretty, pretty large inside sales manager role a um, couple of years ago where I literally ran all of the North American operations um, for that entire inside sales, inside sales department. So kind of done it all, seen it all. Um, but while I was doing a lot of these jobs over the last four, almost five years, I kind of broke off into copywriting as well. Um, I started my own blog, became an editor. Um, I launched a writing coaching business, really fell in love with writing. Uh, and when I started learning more about copywriting, I started seeing that it's very similar to sales. I, I think I picked up copywriting somewhat quickly because I had learned so much about buyer behavior and human psychology and just all these different things about, you know, buying decisions and, and just why people are the way they are, what makes them tick, right? How how to effectively communicate with folks. Um, however, in the sales types of roles that I was in, it was always, you know, I always had to verbally be able to articulate that. I had to you know, verbally uh, sell. So copywriting made me take that skill set and harness it and channel it into the written word, which is very challenging and very difficult to do. It's a whole different um, part of your brain that has to <laughs> that has to work properly to, to do that. A um, whole different skill set. So I like telling, uh, a lot of times I'll tell clients that, you know, with someone like me, uh, in essence, I'm at the intersectionality of where sales meets copywriting, there's me, right? Because I've had to do both at a high level. Um, I've done everything from copywriting, coaching to, you know, again, the freelance writing, blogging, all this stuff. So these are some of the things that I offer in my own business regarding sales training and copywriting coaching and even ghostwriting, you know, content for our clients to, to help them attract more of their ideal clients and say the right things, tell their story properly and effectively, uh, make sure their brand is resonating with their people, their ideal customer base, so that they can generate more of those high quality leads for themselves, get more deals in the pipeline, <clears throat> close more business, close more deals, and generate that revenue that they're looking to generate so they can hit their goals. Um, I get a lot of people asking me about this as well. You know, Brian, why does copywriting matter, right? Can't I just use chat GPT or Gemini or one of these other, you know, dozen AI writing tools, because most of them are free anyways, or they're very, very inexpensive to use on a monthly subscription type of base. And I always say, you can, nothing's stopping you. And a lot of them are great. Full disclosure, I use chat GPT all the time to help me do my additional research, to help me crank out a, a skeleton model or a template or a, a very rough draft or preliminary version of something that I'm trying to get going, just to just to get the creative juices flowing and get some words on the on the computer screen, so to speak, or get some words on the page. And then, because I do have that copywriting skill set that I'm always working to continuously improve, I can look at it, look at the content that the client you know gives me. And this is I think where a lot of the AI tools fall short. 
is by communicating with the client and understanding their brand, understanding their background, understanding their story, I can edit the copy that ChatGPT and these other platforms create very effectively to make sure that it doesn't sound robotic, it doesn't sound vanilla, it doesn't sound mundane. It's not saying the same exact things that a lot of the client's competitors are also saying because some of them might be using ChatGPT and other AI writing tools as well. So I always tell clients, this is exactly why you need to have that copywriting skill set or hire someone that actually that actually has it. Because if you don't, if you just generate that AI written content and in essence, copy and paste it and post it on your social media platforms and on your website, you're not going to attract your ideal clients, right? This, this type of copy is probably not going to align with your brand. It's not going to align well with your story the essence of you and the value that you bring to the table. It's not going to be able to articulate the value prop that you're offering in the marketplace and what sets you apart and differentiates you from your competitors, right? Why should they go with you? Why should they buy your products and your services compared to the guy down the street or the other five you know, competitors' websites that they stumbled across over the last couple of days? Why you, right? Especially if you charge a little bit more or quite a bit more than a lot of your competitors, now you're not even able to compete on price, which PS, you never should compete on price anyways. That's my personal opinion. That's been my experience. Um, compete on value. Don't compete uh, based on price. If you're competing on price, it's a race to the bottom. Uh, cheapest person wins the deal and congratulations. You're going to work a ton of hours and serve a bunch of people. Um, and many of them probably won't appreciate the value you're bringing to the table anyways, because they got it at such a cheap rate they're not going to see the quality in your product and service. And they will probably, fortunately, always find a always find something to complain about. That's the type of people that you're, you'll attract when you're trying to compete on price. Now, with that being said, I want to give you a little tidbit that you can take with you today of how you can marry copywriting and sales. Right? How can you tie both of those things together? What is something that you can actually utilize as soon as this call is over to get out there and start attracting more of your ideal clients start generating more of these leads get more calls on you know on the calendar close more deals etc i like using the paz framework this is usually it's one of my main go-to's one of my main strategies and frames when i when i'm writing my copy when i'm posting content online i do like to mix and match all the time but this is one of my favorite ones because it's so Simple, straight to the point. It it forces you to be very succinct with what you're writing and crafting when you do post a social media caption. And how it works is this. So PAS, P-A-S. The P stands for problem or the pain point that your ideal client has. The A stands for agitate. So with the P, you want to write from the jump. You want to state what that client is struggling for. Um, I used to work with a lot of personal trainers and fitness coaches. So they would work obviously with, with clients on their nutrition, helping them lose weight, you know, tailoring um, customized workout programs and workout regimens to help that person get you know, into better shape, whether it's losing fat, building muscle, et cetera, et cetera. So their initial pain point, one of them might be, hey, are you struggling to get rid of those last 15 pounds before Christmas gets here? Or, hey, are you trying to fit into that bikini in the summertime? Or are you trying to get that elusive six pack, right? Something like that, you know, losing that beer belly, getting in shape, something. So something that's a relevant pain point. Then you want to agitate it. So you want to really show the reader why this pain point is actually causing them, you know, potentially harm in their personal life or professional life. How is it impacting them? Why should it matter that they actually solve this problem, right? Um, so they might use something like, okay, are you struggling to lose those annoying 15 pounds or those stubborn 15 pounds. You've tried every diet in the books and nothing is working. You're tired of yo-yo dieting. You're tired of not liking the way you look. Your jeans not fitting. You're tired of not having energy for your kids. Does this sound like you, right? So you're, at, you're giving some examples of probably some of the things that this person has had to deal with and how you know these, these 15 pounds or this extra fat that they're carrying around or what have you has actually you know, significantly impacted them. So you're calling that out to show that you actually understand where they're coming from and that you can help. Then the S stands for solution, right? What is the solution to this problem or challenge that this ideal client is dealing with, this human being is dealing with? You can use like a simple call to action 
or you know promote one of your programs and say my clients have you know my clients and then maybe in parentheses put over a thousand of them or over 200 other however many roughly how many clients you've helped can vouch for me being able to help them lose those 15 pounds and then some right and maybe you put in like a a five star review screenshot of something that one of your you know, recent clients just told you about how much they loved working with you or how you know you actually helped them lose 30 pounds in four months and keep it off and they've never felt better in their whole life something like that right then maybe like a you know comment in parentheses fat loss to learn more right to learn more about how i can help you so simple straight to the point just takes a few lines you don't need to have a, a whole story or a novel written out p for the pain point a for agitate s for the solution and you can apply that right now and obviously when people you know take that use that call to action and dm you or leave that comment then you want to have an appropriate you know messaging conversation with them to to get that call scheduled if there's someone already in your network so they're right here in your phone which a lot of my ideal clients they're already in my network uh, i was really lucky to have that that you know, shoot them a text if you see them leaving a comment or if you see them looking at your posts showing any interest engaging with it if they're you know already a facebook friend message them right if they're on linkedin what have you so generate that offline conversation um i do this kind of stuff all the time and it, i can tell you it works you just have to be consistent with what you're saying and posting and how you engage with folks um, and the way you show up right the type of videos you post the pictures the the you know copy type of captions that you post it all ties into the essence of you right and which kind of leads me to my next point so with sales for me i've never i've never thought about sales being oh you know i need to sell this person something i need to close this deal i need to get my commission check i need to you know get this money um overcome these objections and all this other all this other stuff that i was taught you know from traditional sales trainers early in my career and even several years into my career for me i always loved sales because it focuses on problem solving and i love solving problems not just in my own life but i i like solving other people's challenges and, and problems if if they'll let me right it's I don't want to give unsolicited advice because that never goes well, as a lot of you probably know. But if it is something they need to work through, I like showing up into someone's life and offering value. I like being useful to them. I like actually mattering, right? And so I like when people, I enjoy when people say, man, I'm so glad I met you. Like I was dealing with this issue for all these months or weeks. I didn't know how to fix it. <clears throat> I used you know, three, four, five other people uh, who told me they could fix it and they couldn't. You're the first person that actually has. You actually did what you said you could do. You delivered on your promise, right? I love that. So I always use sale, sales and selling as problem solving. What is the thing that this human being is struggling with? And can me and my team actually solve it? Are we actually good at it? Do we have experience fixing it? If we don't, I tell them, I'm very transparent in my business, right? Hey, we don't do a lot with X, Y, Z happy to learn and happy to go and do some research and take it to my team and see if this is something we can quickly figure out we'd love to try but just want you to know this type of issue or thing that you're asking for i wouldn't say that i'm an expert at solving this right because i think a lot of people fall into this trap where when you try to serve everybody you end up serving nobody so i let people know this is my lane these few things are what i'm excellent at this is what I do the most of, this is what I have the most experience with. This is where I, I find the most joy and why I'm able to deliver the biggest results to my clients because that's just where my skill sets lie and my expertise lies along with the rest of my team. We're happy to try this other thing, but I just, I want a level set on expectations that we don't do this very often. So bear with us. And if you're able to be patient and allow us a little bit of time and grace to learn it, we're happy to try to learn it and try to deliver this for you. But just want to set some reasonable expectations around that because this isn't something that I would I would say that I'm an expert in, right? So now I'd like to I'd like to move into an actual real world um, real world example of <laughs> trying to solve problems for myself. So last week I actually lost a pretty large client. Um, he was going through some stuff, you know, in his in his own business and, and just in his personal life as well 
Um, and so long story short, he ended up having to temporarily pause our engagement. Might just be like a one or two month pause, might end up being longer. I, I don't know. It just, it's going to depend on how long he's going to need to get his stuff sorted out and get into a better place. So I had only been working with him for, I think about two, two months. Yeah. And so when he told me this, you know, in one of our, our stand, uh, weekly standing calls that we had, naturally I was like, shoot, you know, what am I supposed to do now? This was a terrific client. I loved working with him. He was really happy with the work that we were doing. Um, he talks about us all, all the time on his social media profiles. He's always trying to refer people to me and, you know, promote me. Uh, we always got along really well. Very much do consider him an, you know, an actual friend and not just your you know, kind of standard client. Um, and so I was thinking, okay, how do I replace this revenue that I'm going to be losing moving forward for X amount of months, right? What what do I do? And so after, and it only took me about, I'm very fortunate because of my sales training and I've had a lot of roles with you know client success and account expansion and organic account expansion, organic lead generation, this and that, where I was able to think of a solution really, really quickly. And I want to give you this guy, give you guys this tidbit as well, because these are, this is something that you can definitely do in your own business. I'm almost hundred percent sure you can do it. Right. So here's what I did. I call this a rekindle campaign, rekindle campaign. What does that mean? For those of you that aren't familiar with that term, I want to make sure I break it down really quick for you. So a rekindle campaign is when you're literally trying to rekindle or kind of stoke that flame again, so to speak, of um, this could be, you know, a, a former prospect, a prospect in the, in the past who either, you know, did end up working with you. So they actually became a client and they were, hopefully they were happy with your service, right? They were happy with what you did, um, but you haven't you haven't talked to them in a while, right? Maybe it was just a little one-off project. I get a lot of those. So when the project's done, if the client doesn't seem to have anything else for you to do, maybe you don't talk to them again for a month or two or three and time goes by. You're focusing on new clients and there's other things going on in your personal life and just time goes by and next thing you know, oh my God, I haven't heard from Amy in six months. I wonder how she's doing, right? So you kind of stoke that flame and see maybe if there's any other work that they can throw your way uh, any other projects uh, maybe now is a better time or maybe there's something else that you can do to help them right be useful to them there's also going to be i'm sure of it prospects who ended up not working with you so it was a, a closed lost deal lost deal um, and it could be for several reasons maybe they just didn't have the budget to work with you didn't have the funds available right um, they couldn't afford your services maybe they were dealing with a lot in their personal life and, and Whatever they came to you initially for, it, it was a priority, but then something happened to them um, in their personal life that they just became a higher priority and they had to go deal with that. So they ended up telling you, hey, sorry, this isn't a good time. I don't know, reach back out in three, four months, what have you. Um, sometimes people act like they're really interested in working with you. I know this drives me insane. I'm sure it drives a lot of you insane too. They say, yeah, send over the agreement, send over the invoice. I can't wait to work with you, et cetera, et cetera. You get all these positive signals and buying signals, but then crickets, right? They start ghosting you. You're trying to follow up about the invoice not getting paid or the agreement not getting signed, the lack of communication, you do a few, several follow-ups, a few weeks goes by, nothing, nothing, nothing. Finally, you realize, I, I don't know what in the world happened, but it seems like this person doesn't want to work with me. I don't know what's going on. And I can't keep spending more and more of my time chasing after them. Um, because I have other people here that aren't interested in working with me and I'd rather work with them and give them my time and energy, right? Because they're actually serious about me solving this problem or me helping them. So there'll be a lot of people there too. Hopefully not too many, but there will be some, you know, of those situations as well. So with me, I had all of the above, right? There were several one-off projects, uh, one-off project clients <clears throat> that I had helped months ago, three, four, five months ago that I haven't heard back from, you know, after the project finished in two or three months. Um, there were a few, you know, that ended up not working with me for, you know, a few different reasons, like I mentioned before. Uh, there were some who, you know, and ended up not working with me, but were very, seemed like they were very serious about having me reach back out in X amount of time, because it might be a better time. They might be having a better, you know, aligned project, you know, in two months, three months, what have you. So I literally, I'm on Thumbtack, uh, by the way. So I offer my services on there, mainly revolving around copywriting, but I do offer some sales consulting there. Um, 
a lot of times it turns into business consulting or business coaching because they'll start telling me more and more about their marketing and sales operations and I'll you know give advice there. But I went through all my old leads in there, people that did work with me and people that didn't work with me for whatever reason. And out of the, there was probably, I don't know, I would say there's probably 30 to 40 people, give or take 35, maybe 40 people. I can't remember the exact number, but I went through and I started messaging a lot of them, right? Depending on the situation. So I wrote very short, customized text messages because Thumbtack allows me to keep the leads and keeps the phone number in there. So I'd send out text messages kind of, hey, I was thinking about you. Um, how's everything going? And I'd reference the project that we worked on and how awesome it was to work together. Basically, I asked if they had anything else I could help with because for this next week or two, give or take, looks like I'm going to be a little bit slower than how I have been for the last couple of months. So while I have this little bit of extra time, if you have anything that I can help you with, I'd love to be useful to you, basically. Made it a lot more succinct than that. But um, sure enough, one of the ladies, she did have some extra work for me. She was actually thinking about me a few weeks ago um, and just got busy with work, didn't get a chance to text me or you know call me. She was happy that I texted her. And it was, it's wild how it works, but there was several letters that she needed me to edit. Um, and so she sent them over and long story short, I did all the work rather quickly because I had the time, right? And made $450 total for, for this month from that one project of all these letters. That's typically the work that I do for as I rewrite a bunch of letters and statements and things like that that she has uh, for, for her job that she's gotta do. Um, so that was great. Another one, I literally cold called him. And I said, hey, I know we haven't talked in a while. I remember a conversation from a couple months ago. We kind of caught up real quick. He's like, oh my God, Brian, so great that I'm talking to you. I actually have a, a book idea that I wanted to run by you. I just been so busy. And so we did an hour long you know, discovery call or, or session the next day to talk through the book. And sure enough, within a couple of days of that, he officially, you know, I quoted him the price. He was totally fine with it. Sign the agreement. It's going to be a big project. It's probably going to take us a year to complete. Sign the agreement, pay the invoice. So within literally five days, I landed two clients through that rekindle campaign. One of them ended up being a very high ticket deal. The other one, a little lower ticket, right? 450 bucks. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that you guys can do, right? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of money out there to be made. There's a lot of people that could use your services. I'm sure of it. Um, you just have to be thoughtful with your copy and thoughtful with your selling methods, right? Again, it's not selling, it's problem solving. Um, and if you would like to work with me, if you'd like to pick my brain, learn more, uh, please feel free to check out my website. It'll list a lot of the services we have. It's Brian Hurians business services dot com. So it's just my first and last name, just like you can see on the screen, B-R-I-A-N-K-U-R-I-A-N. And there's an S after that. And so Brian Curian's business services, all spelled out, dot com. And you can always email me. It's just my first dot last name at gmail.com, brian.curian at gmail.com. So would love to you know share my insights with you. Would love to help any way I can in your businesses. Um, I wish you all the success in the world. My initial milestone here in my business is to help minimum at least 1,000 entrepreneurs and solopreneurs learn the essential skills of copywriting and sales so that they, they can become so successful in their own business that they'll never again have to work a job that they hate. And I am very passionate about that because that used to be me for a long time. So I thank you all for your attention today. I thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of these sessions, these these you know amazing trainings that are going on. I wish you all the, all the success in the world. And uh, always be here cheering for you in the background. I would love to work with you uh, if it makes sense to do so. So please don't hesitate to reach out. I love you all and thank you. Thank you for everything. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for participating in today's enlightening session. As we transition to our next expert, remember that each strategy and insight is a step toward becoming a transformative leader in your field. Visit ConnectedLeadersAcademy.com to stay engaged and informed. The journey of change is ongoing. Let's move forward together.